So you've got yourself a DJI Mini 3 Pro, but have you got any filters for it yet? Do you really need them? And if so, which ones do you need? Okay, so before we get into that, I just wanna quickly thank Freewell for sending me through this set of filters. Um, I'm gonna go through them in a second to show you what they do and whether you need one of those, each one or not. Um, so before I do that though, I just wanna say, if you've bought the DJI Mini 3 Pro and you haven't got any filters for it yet, don't let that put you off flying, even if it's really sunny outside. Because what will happen is, even though you've got a wide aperture of 1.7, the camera, or the if you're in pro mode or if you're in the auto mode, the shutter speed is going to go to, say, maybe 1,000th or 2,000th of a second. Now, if you're super high up and you're doing slow movements, that doesn't really matter. Where it matters is if you're on the ground doing ground video and you're using a really fast shutter speed, you may get a jittery movement. So what you're really looking for, and this is where ND filters come in for most video work, is a shutter speed that is twice the frame rate. So if you're shooting 25 frames a second, you need a shutter speed of 1 50th. If you're shooting, as in this case, which I was doing, uh, 50th of a second or 50 frames per second, you need something like a hundredth of a second shutter speed. So like I said though, if you're super high up and you're just doing slow movements, you won't notice the difference and most people won't either. So the only time you really need those filters is if you're flying low to the ground or if you've got something in the foreground that's moving, um, you really wanna keep that down. But there are other benefits to ND filters as well. So before we get into that, I just wanna explain what filters were given to me and how I'm gonna test them quickly. So the first one is a, um, a skylight filter. Um, now, I've gotta be honest, I tested this and I couldn't really see the difference between that and just the camera with basically a clear glass on it. Where this works for most people is it may add a slight touch of warmth to a photo, um, but it also protects the lens. So in this instance, I'm gonna say this is great for protecting the lens. If you're shooting in an environment where there's maybe water coming in or something like that, you've got maybe a spit of rain. I don't know, but I will be honest and I'll say I didn't really see too much of a difference with that. So I'm gonna leave that to the side for now. The other filters they gave me were a set of ND filters. So these are pure ND filters and there's six in there. So it's the all day six pack and they range from ND4 up to ND1000. So really forget the thousand. We've got five that go from ND4 to ND64. They're your general ones for most weather conditions. And the ND1000 is for more specialist where you want to do kind of long exposures and stuff. So they're really good. So they are just ND filters. All they will do is bring the shutter speed down to match the, or double the frame rate. These filters is the all day six pack with polarizer filters. So again, I've got six, fil uh, six filters here. Now it's an ND filter with polarizer. So once again, you've got five ranging from ND4 up to ND64 with a polarizer on. And then you've got just a basic polarizer. So there's no ND, it's just polarizer. Now I'll come to those in a sec, but what we're gonna do quickly is show you why you might wanna slow the shutter speed down um, even with a drone. So if you're low to the ground, you, if you look at this footage I've got here, you can see that I'm low to the ground and the uh, we're gonna just fly along for a little bit. Let's get this going. We're gonna fly along until we get to that bit of rock in the front, that kind of pier bit jutting out. So you can see both look very similar, but as soon as we stop there, you can see that the image on the right at the bottom of the frame is actually blurred. On the left, it's pin sharp. So a little bit of advice in a second, but what that means is the shot on the left had no filter on, so it was at about a thousandth of a second shutter speed, maybe even faster. So what's happening is every single frame it's taking is super fast, like a camera shutter. It's freezing the action so you don't get any image blur. On the one on the right, I put the ND64 filter on, which is one of the strongest, and that slowed the shutter speed down considerably, allowing the, the film to blur in the foreground. So if you're doing one of these super long shots going along the beach, you're gonna get that much nicer kind of image blur as, a, as the image goes out of the frame. It looks a lot more kind of realistic. So that's when you'd use an ND filter for that sort of effect. If you're low to the ground, doing a really cool shot flying along. Okay, so that's that one. Now, there's an instance where you wouldn't necessarily use the ND filter. And that's if you're shooting at high resolution, say 4K with this drone, or if you've got a drone that shoots 5.9K or 5.4K, uh, like the Air 2S or the Mavic 3, uh, Mavic 3, then if you're using a super fast shutter speed and you wanna pull frame grabs from it, that's where you wouldn't use a filter. Because what will be happening is every single frame will be super quick, like a, a thousandth of a second, two thousandth of a second. So if you're filming some action of maybe motorbikes going over jumps and you wanna freeze it for frame grabs, 
then I wouldn't use a filter. I would just have it going really fast shutter speed so I can pull frame grabs from anywhere on the clip. It's like having 50 frames a second with a, with a camera in the sky. So you can pull some fantastic frame grabs from that. So that's one instance where I, I wouldn't use that filter. So I'm gonna quickly go through these because you're gonna see that I've used just four filters. Like I said, I, I haven't included the um, skylight filter in these tests because I just wanted to show you the difference between the four. So if I set this running, you can see there, I have put the drone up, let's pause it a sec. I flew the, front, the drone up from the, exactly the same position, 50 meters straight up, and I had a point of view that I was actually getting exactly the same position each time. So I just span the drone 360 degrees for each one. Sometimes I went a bit fast, sometimes I didn't, but really they do stay together quite well. And you can see on the top left, I've got no filter on the camera. On the top right, I've just got an ND16. On the bottom left, I've got an ND16 with polarizer filter. And on the bottom right, I've got just the polarizer filter. So if we let this play through, you can see the difference between all of them. Now, it's important for me to mention at this point that all of these clips are straight out of camera. So they're straight out of the drone, no editing whatsoever. So what you're seeing here is a full 360 of Weymouth with all of those, well, three filters and one without. So you can hopefully see that there's a bit of difference between all of them. Now, the no filter one's okay, produces really good footage, really nice. But for me, I think the ND filter adds a touch of warmth, a little bit of magenta, perhaps a bit of warmth, um, and it looks really good. But the ND16 plus polarizer, for me, is the winner because it adds that warmth and it gives you great color saturation and everything else. So what we're gonna do now is I've done a bit of editing to these just to add a bit of oomph to all of them. So they've all had the same, just a bit of levels, curves, brightness, contrast, and a touch of saturation, just to emphasize what these filters do. So again, you can see the top left without any filter still looks really good. The one with just the ND filter adds that touch of warmth to it, which I think is quite nice. So if you're just using an ND filter, fantastic, that's good. So I like that, but again, the ND16 with polarizer, you get the best of both worlds. You get a bit of warmth and you get the rich colors coming out from the polarizer filter. And it obviously cuts through any reflections on the sea. So it looks really, really clear and really saturated, beautiful colors, really good. And the polarizer filter does, a, just the polarizer does a good job as well. And you can see there that you've just got, um, you can see the sea looking really good. The polarizer cuts through the reflections and it looks fantastic. So out of all those four, like I said, if you haven't got a filter, you still get amazing footage from this drone, even in super bright sunshine. sunshine. Um, but the, for me, the polarizer with ND filter just was the absolute bee's knees. Now, I wanna quickly show you something before we do that. I've, I've taken this out a few times and tested this. Um, but for me, because that filter worked the best, I actually took some shots. Now, there's one caveat you have to be aware of when using a polarizer filter, whether it's just the polarizer or the polarizer with the ND, and I'm gonna show you this clip quickly here. Um, after I'd done some testing, I flew the drone round and spun it round because the polarization effect depends on where the sun is in the shot. So as you turn, you'll see the effect changes. That's why I did the 360s because you can see that that has a different effect as you spin. So as I spun round here, you can have a look at this. Um, I was actually doing a sideways view, but you can see that there's a central part of the sky which is really dark and either side, it's a lot lighter. And that's when you use a polarizer filter with a wide angle lens, you cannot get rid of that sort of effect. So when you're using polarizers on the ground, I tend to use like 35 mil, 50 mil, even telephoto lenses, because then you lose that vignetting effect. There's no real way around it with a drone in the sky when you've got a wide angle lens. So what you can do, and I'll show you here another example. So this is again over Weymouth, and you can see here, I've got the same effect. Now the sea looks amazing. It was really calm this day. Everything was just beautiful, no wind. The sea was as calm as you like, and I've got the polarizer and ND filter on, so we've got a bit of warmth and that great polarizing effect. And you can see there that we've got that bit in the sky again where the um, where it's just really dark blue in the middle and we've got this kind of bright vignetting on the outside. So all I did was put it into After Effects. You can use any software and then add some darker vignetting to the outside. Um, and I did this really quickly, so it's not perfect, but you can see now I've got that, I've kind of leveled out the polarization effect, so it looks really good. So again, this was the ND16 with the polarizer filter. Just looks fantastic to me. That, that doesn't look like Weymouth to me. It could be the Caribbean or anywhere. It looks superb. You can see right through the sea, it cuts all the reflections out. Rich colors, nice and sharp from the drone. 
uh, and we've got the sky looking fantastic and all the colors just really sort of pop. So for me, that just works really well. And if I was to use that filter setup, flying low along the ground, I'd get a slow enough shutter speed. I could maybe use this to ND64 with polarizer and I would get that same effect where the as it comes out of frame, it would be blurred. So you'd get that really cool effect. So for me, it works really well. But the only thing is, as we move around, like I said, things change. So as I moved around the scene on this, you could see the vignette started to show that I'd added. So with a bit of post-production, you can get rid of that. But I was really pleased with this whole shot. Um, it was really good. So as you've seen in the sample video clips so far, if you've got a clear blue sky, you actually get quite a, a deep vignette effect, which doesn't look all that great and you do have to do post-production. And that's all to do with where you actually set the filter. So you can turn it, set differing strengths of the polarization. So you will possibly get that effect. But we also saw on the clips when the, the, we had cloud in the sky with blue sky, still had sunshine, but we didn't get that effect, even though the filter was set to the same setting. So depending on what kind of light you're shooting in, if you are shooting in a clear blue sky and you're getting that vignette effect, what Freewell have done is actually put some indicators on here to give the optimum settings. So you can see on here, on the red ring on the filter, there's a small white indication mark. If you turn that to the very small H on the front of the actual filter, that's their optimum settings for shooting in horizontal mode. And you can see here, when I set that, you actually get the, the same effect where you kill all the kind of reflections on the water, you get the nice rich colors. You don't quite get as dark a sky as you'd like, but you can obviously adjust that in post if you wanted to, but you still get the great effect and it's the optimum setting for shooting horizontal. And if we turn it to the top, you'll see there's a V on the top of the filter. And if we set the indicator to that, that's for when you're shooting in hor uh, vertical mode or portrait mode with the DJI Mini 3. So you can see here again, I've set it to that and we've got still got the nice uh, effect from the polarizer filter, the reflections have gone, deep rich colors, but again, the sky is not quite as dark, but you've still got the really good effect. So just bear that in mind when you're using this filter to experiment a little bit. If you're unsure, set it to either H for horizontal or V when shooting in vertical mode. So that's basically it. Um, I wanna keep this fairly short because these filters are kind of necessary, but they're not. Like I said, the drone will fly without them and you'll get some amazing footage from the Mini 3 Pro without any filters at all. But if you wanna add that bit of je ne sais quoi, um, then I would add a, in the first instance, if you're flying just normally and you're maybe flying for a client or you're doing some video work, I would just use an ND filter. So anything between the ND16 and 64, depending on the brightness of the day, use that, it will add a little bit of warmth bit of rich, richness to the colors and you'll get that blurry effect and it'll just look fantastic. Um, I would maybe set the, if you're not used to this, set the camera to auto. So as you turn into the sun, it will adjust the, the kind of uh, exposure. Now, if you're looking for, like I had on this day, I could see that the sea was calm and that we had beautiful blue skies and there was no wind and everything. So I used the polarizer. So if you're looking for that effect where you've got clear seas, or if you wanna make the, the sky a bit richer and darker, then add the polarizer filter as well. So for me, if I was to just order one, one of these sets, it would be the ones with polarizer. I love the effect, but don't overdo it and make sure that when you're flying into the sun and doing that, you're not getting too much of that vignette effect because it's a bit of a pain to actually correct it. Um, but other, other than that, you, I would go for the, the, the ND filters. It's your choice, it really doesn't matter. It depends on what you're gonna be filming, but I can safely say that the sharpness and clarity through these filters is no different to the drone without a filter. So the glass is fantastic. Freewell make really good filters. So really the choice is yours, which one you go for, but I would recommend either of them. Okay, so I hope that helps. If you have liked this, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, sub, do whatever you need to do, and we'll see you on the next video.